listening to Waves in the Ocean, a conscious living podcast. Like the ocean, we are all part of the collective consciousness, each expressing an individual wave. In this podcast, we give you the tools to live with intention, reconnect with your true essence, and create more abundance in every aspect of your life. We are your hosts, Lauren and Lauren, best friends, yogis, magical beings, and ascension guides. Our intention is to share our authentic truth and bring on others living a conscious life to create a ripple effect in this world. Let's go on an amazing journey together. Welcome back, everybody. Today we have our first guest, our good friend, Mike James. Woo! And... What kind of intro can I give to him? Motivational Mike. Motivational Mike. He is a coach. He is a breathwork facilitator, athlete, cold plunge extraordinaire. And just finished our yoga training. So yeah. we got to know Mike pretty well. And yeah. So tell us a little bit about, about yourself, Mike. Like what got you into... You know, you're really into jujitsu and breath work. Like, where did, when did that come into your life? Wow. Um, I, didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't, no, right I could not have expected the tell us about yourself uh, question. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I didn't prepare for it. Um, well, first of all, thank you for having me on. I really am honored to get to do this with you guys. Since I didn't prepare my where did I come from speech, I would say you asked me specifically about breath work and jujitsu. I grew into jujitsu as kind of as I aged. I, I was a wrestler from a, a younger age. As you get older, wrestling becomes very tough to do on the body. Mm -hmm. um, and so I went to the next, what I thought was logical step was jujitsu, which is still very tough to do on the body, but it's a little less explosive. So that's kind of the next logical step for me. So that's where I went from beginning to end. And as far as the breath work is concerned, that I got was lucky enough to find about 10 years ago when I started to get in shape for my wedding. Mm. Yeah, I did what every other 30 year old wrestler does. You call the yoga studio and you say, what's the hardest class? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I think no idea what, what it was about at all. Yoga or breath or, or anything. I just knew what I thought it was, was a different workout. So I was like, I'm going to go work as hard as I can. And then that was a Monday night. I'll never forget it. The next day, I woke up and I just felt better and I was cool. And so I was like, I'll do it again. It was very challenging for me. I couldn't even get my breath at the beginning at all. Mm -hmm. And um, so I was like, I can do better next time. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back and do better. So I did better. I worked a little harder. Next day, felt awesome. That happened like two or three weeks in a row, four weeks in a row. So then I started to Google what was going on. Why was I feeling better the next day? And of course, that led me down the path of, what yoga really is and how the breath affects the body and how the body reacts and responds and the brain responds and those things connect. So then it basically became since then almost like a, a passion. Like I couldn't mm -hmm. get enough of tying the breath to the wrestling because those are my two favorite things to do. And then of course the next logical step was to go get uh, yoga certified, which that's why I met you guys. <laughs> Ten years <laughs> later. Ten years later. That's the path takes you. So to get into the breath, mostly started with yoga, it sounds like for you. Like just calling the studio and asking like, hey, which hardest class, which I can relate to. And I think we always say yoga is such a big gateway. It's physical, a little hot power class. You're sweating your ass off. Feel good. You just feel like you got like an intense workout. Because I've gone to like stretchy classes where I'm, you know, high school the stupid and I'm just like stretching what's the point like am I getting a workout now I love those classes <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. it's, it's the path of slowing down yeah um, but that's amazing so how did you tie the breath and jiu-jitsu together that was good question that was kind of fun for me because when I went from wrestling jiu-jitsu, I had a cool background where I was good in certain aspects of it. And I was strong and in shape, but I really didn't know the game. The matches are six minutes mm -hmm. instead of wrestling, which is six minutes, but it's three two-minute periods. This is just one six-minute go. Okay. So what I knew about the breath was that I could control my breath and I could go for the full six minutes. And I was starting to see people that were better and more advanced than me didn't have control of their breath. And they couldn't go the whole six minutes. So they might have been ahead or in a good spot for four of those minutes, but eventually they would gas out 
and they just couldn't do the last two minutes and then I would win or, you know, get close to winning or feel better about the end yeah. <laughs> getting beat up, but whatever. And I would know, and I started to notice it. So I'm like, okay, now I need to really hone in on what that looks like. Like, how does it work? What can I do to remind myself to do it? And that's where I started to come a little deeper into this mindfulness path where it's like, you just got to practice it. Just got to practice it. Just got to practice it. <laughs> and and I've, now that I am, I realize it's just like jujitsu. You just have to practice it. You don't even have to practice it for as long. And there's no one that's going to beat you up if you do it wrong. You can just practice it a little bit every single day. So tell us about your daily routines, like breathing, meditation. Do you have a daily practice? Well, I'm lucky enough to be able to teach a version of yoga that I call athlete stretch. Uh, three days a week. So that's kind of my, I use that as my own personal workout. Corey and I have been pretty consistent with every morning, 10, 11 minutes of breath work, 10, 11 minutes of meditation. And then we get in our cold tub. It's amazing. Yeah. It's been, since we got it for sure, it's been really helpful, um, physically incredibly helpful. And mentally it's been a challenge every single day. Yeah. <laughs> you, you wake up, you do do one hard thing and I certainly have found quite a bit of positive momentum in my life since that, since I've added that routine in. Yeah, Mike just came on our Plant Madison retreat and he brought his cold tub and it was probably one of the, it was probably my favorite part of the cold. It was wicked fun. <laughs> it was so fun. It was like, not like, you know, we just came out of a really deep ceremony, breath work, people crying and screaming, dealing with their shit, which is amazing. Absolutely was. But a lot of times too, we can get in like a low place or just like sit in our shit for too long. And doing that, I think got everybody like shifted. We're singing Britney Spears and all of these fun songs. And yeah, just, it was so fun to hear the community together. But um, you did such a good job just like coaching everybody and bringing everybody together. So mm -hmm. yes, more cold plunge things to come, but... So you're into, do you use the breath for the cold plunges? And like, tell us a little bit of like, just benefits of cold plunging, breath, all that stuff. Sure. This is something I love to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> so at the, I kind of alluded to like the meditation on one end of the spectrum, sitting quietly by yourself. And then Kobe Bryant in the fourth quarter of an NBA game on the other end of the spectrum. And I think that in the middle there is cold plunge. Mm -hmm. I know that's kind of a, a weird ABC connection, but. When you learn that your breath physiologically will control your fight or flight first, then you learn that your breath will allow you to recognize that your, when your body talks to you, it's just talking to you. It's not yelling at you. It's not telling you you have to go anywhere. It's really not commanding you to do anything. It's just talking to you. Then you get in the cold tub and you have to use both of those things yeah. right away to be like, all right, what did they say about the breath talking to me or the body or the things, right? And you go back to your breath. And before you know it, you're done. Three minutes, you're out. And you realize that you were able to do something very hard by just using your own mindfulness breathwork practice that you might have even just developed two days before or an hour before. And I think that's what's so cool for me is seeing people learn that and see it and, and own it because they did it and not be told about it or think about it. They actually physically did it for three minutes and they get out and they're like, okay. Now I know something. It's almost like a window or a door was opened where they now know you can use the breath right there. Mm -hmm. So that's what I love seeing. Yeah. And it's like that, the soul, the beautiful thing about those like challenging experiences, right? Even like a cold plunge or jumping in the ocean when it's freezing in the winter and all those things. If you can maintain a state of peace in something like that, you can take that throughout your life anywhere. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. So it's like, if you can go into a cold pond, you're like, I'm going to do this for three minutes, five minutes, six minutes, 10 minutes, whatever it might be, and keep my cool, pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> um, then you can be at a red light when someone fucking flips you off or is an asshole and be like, it's all right. I'm going to chill. I'm going to keep my nervous system at rest and ease. Yeah, absolutely. Flying off the handle. Totally. And there's also so many physical benefits too. Like for me, my whole body just feels like super chill after. It's, it's gonna, like chill. I feel like it's a shot of espresso. Yeah. I just feel it's really light and good. Yeah. Like upbeat, certainly. But yeah. like just like I feel like this like sense of like full muscle mm. relaxation, um, which is a really peaceful state to be. So 
So yeah, I don't know if you experience any physical benefits like with all your oh, athletics and things like that as well. Or I absolutely, yeah, definitely, one hundred percent joint improvement. So mm-hmm. when your joints hurt or your muscles are fatigued, but more specifically for me, when my joints hurt, like when I get in there, two things happen. One, I almost feel those things right away. Like the little nagging injuries, the mm-hmm. cold water almost like brings my t- awareness to it right away. And two, when I'm done, I, they, it subsides most more often than not, unless I have a harder injury, you know, just my normal wear and tear from all the stuff that we do. It's almost always gone. Yeah. And it, it just makes so much sense, right? The blood is what heals you and you are shocking your system to make sure the blood is moving all over the place, right? It's pulling all, all the blood inward to keep you what is perceived to be safe. And then when you get back out, it gets to go back out to all the, you know, the skin and the fingertips and all of the places it pulled the blood from. So I look at that as like a shocking, it's like, one good shock to the system for three minutes for the day and mm-hmm. you're off to go. Amazing. Yeah. We had um, someone on a retreat who likes cold plunging as well. And he was saying that he broke his arm and that was part of his, it helped increase his recovery time because of what you just said. It's yeah. Fascinating. I believe it. And, yeah. and the proof is in the pudding for me. Now that it's been consistent, I can tell you, I feel my body feels better than it, it did in previous years. It's mm, amazing. That is amazing. That's what we all want to feel too, right? As you get older, you feel better, yeah. more stronger. It's like, let's ditch the narrative of like, you get old and you die and like you get cr- cr- crippled and aches and pains and being like, as you can get older, you can feel better than you ever had before. I agree. I think that's well said. Let's ditch that narrative. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's on with it. And get people to understand like this, you, you guys say all the time, your own, your own best healer mm-hmm. choose to, to spend that time, right? And it will work, mm-hmm. especially when you make the breath physical, especially when you physically choose to open up your lungs all the way and close them down all the way. I feel like it's almost cliche to say that you're making space, but you're, but you are right? we, all day. We're clenched down, we're, we're up, down and hunched and hunched and, or better yet, as an athlete, we spend all of our time pulling our abs together. We're yeah. our abs are strong through the core and all the things that our coaches would always tell us. And it's all true. But what happens when you get old is now it's all used to being tight and tight and tight and tight and tight. So you got to eventually figure out a way to push back against that. And I've been using the breath as that pushback, that opening. And ever since then, my athletic performance has gone up. My mindfulness has clearly gone up. Yeah. <laughs> my overall, like my, I'm, I was never someone that got sick, but like my overall health and well being, I believe, has improved. Amazing. Amazing. Reverse aging. Exactly. So, yeah, whenever I think of you, I think of, you know, athlete, coach, breath work, facilitator, all the things that you're you're doing now. And I want to get into that more of what you do, but I also really need to know how you got here. <laughs> <laughs> like, where did this start? Like, were you just, you know, born super mindful, really aware of your breath, or did it start more from an athletic standpoint, or what got you to where you are now? Wow. Loaded question. Loaded question. Yeah. But me, myself, and the people want to know. And the people want to know. <laughs> Did you come out of the womb with an ice cube in your hand? <laughs> <laughs> like meditating and breathing from a, like a young age. No, no, I was <laughs> definitely not that. <laughs> that uh, definitely one of the lucky ones, though. I mean, I had a great fam- fam- I have a great family, loving, just so much love in my family. When I was a kid, in order to play sports, I had to organize myself because I wasn't allowed to go um, or sign up for organized sports, mainly because I think my, my mom just didn't want to drive me around. <laughs> <laughs> I totally respect. Understandable. Yeah. Understandable. <laughs> I, totally I know a lot of people who are going to like 20 games in a weekend. <laughs> it's too much. Too much. It's too much. And she was pretty much said it right away but she was amazing and i had every piece of sporting equipment i could have and i had the time i was allowed to go find my friends organize a game and then play so sports became like all of the things for me it became friendship it became organizing it became effort it became competing it became everything when i got older i was allowed to play sports when i got to high school and then it just became about winning and just 
everything was about sports. And I really didn't care for your opinion if you didn't care about sports. I will be honest. I, <laughs> <laughs> I had no time for anybody that was talking about mindfulness or music or anything. I knew everything back then, but I must have been very narrow-minded at the same time. So sports became my everything, but I got such great coaching. I got such a, an amazing coach that really showed me that it was more about people. You know, sports was about people and, and about helping people get better and about helping them just work to their potential. Fast forward a little bit, start to grow. Immediately decided I wanted to just keep my wrestling going. So I moved to Middleborough and found Brick Road Wrestling, which is, um, and I would just go work out. And as I got older, <laughs> I needed to do a long warm up because I needed to take care of my own body. And I started this mindfulness practice and started to know that I needed to start to do these things. Um, and the kids would always be there. Mm -hmm. And eventually one day I walked in and um, I was late. And one of the other coaches said to me, cause I wasn't coaching. He's like, where you been? I'm like, I'm been here. I'm here. What's up? And he's like, they're all waiting for you. And they're like, there's like 30 kids and like parents all just waiting for me to do this warm up." I was like, oh, so I did like go in the bathroom and I checked myself. I'm like, what am I doing? Am I doing my room? Am I doing the kid? <laughs> What's going on here exactly? And I kind of, from that moment, I was like, you know what? Uh, forget it. I'm just going to go and be me and just do this warm up and have fun with the kids. And that led to like 10 years of just coaching wrestling for youth. Wait, I got a question. So you just showed up and were these kids like following you in your warm up? How, yes. like, what happened? Like, how did, <laughs> yeah. like, how did you just show up late and they were like, we need to do well, this? Yeah. So I had been up there for, for like a couple months just doing my own thing and like help, like helping when I could, like grab a kid and be like, hey, this is a thing you might want to try. Okay. And then, but I, my warm up always had to be consistent because it was pretty extensive. And for wrestling, you really want to get like a good, hard sweat before you start, mm -hmm. you know doing the wrestling. So I knew I needed that. So I started making it nice and hard for myself. And then a some of the kids would start to do it with me and then a few more and then a few more. And then maybe I missed a week or something. I just assumed that everything was going as normal and then came back. And then that one day I just walked in and they were just like, all right, we're ready. Let's go. Whatever you want to do, coach. And I'm just like, uh, okay. You became the coach without even realizing Pretty much. becoming the coach. It was super empowering because yeah. I didn't have to pretend I knew about coaching. I could just be me and kind of, they were little kids and I, I knew I was going to be good with them. They're kids and they're awesome. But then it was empowering and I just kept showing up. And I was like, man, then I'm trying to mark my like Tuesdays and Thursdays at five o'clock. I was going to Brick Road and I was going to coach the kids and it was going to be my favorite part of my, my day, my, mm -hmm. my week really. And it was, it had all the things I loved, and that, you know, it had it coaching and training and teaching and people and kids and me and all of it. So then COVID hit. Mm. So this is like 10 years of this experience and we kind of shut everything down. Um, and I was like, you know what? I need to take this time to just try to figure out how to make the best version of me. And I went and got like all my certifications, which is how I kind of get went to, to you guys personal training, nutrition. And then finally it was like, it's kind of thing I, I want to do. I want to do yoga. Mm -hmm. I want to do that, that. So during this period of time, when we started to open back up, I started to do like boot camp style workouts yep. for families. Okay. So like the kids that came back, they were like, their moms and dads were like, I want to do it too, basically. So we started running that. And then I started teaching athlete stretch as a way to get the kids to stretch. Yeah. The kids, the parents started coming. So that again empowered me to say I must be doing something that people are finding beneficial. And that was like three years ago. And now I'm, this is what I'm doing. I love it. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. I'm teaching mindfulness and athletics to kids and adults. Mm -hmm. So amazing. It seems like it's so naturally fallen into your path. And I love hearing your story of how you were the organizer of all the sports and you loved it and all the things. And it's just following what you love. It seems like it's just like leading into your life, like falling naturally into your path of like, you don't even try. It's just like, Hey, I'm going to go to wrestling. All these people are just waiting for you. Right. Yeah. And I'm just gonna, you know, teach Ashley straight up. All, of, all the parents show up. So it's super cool just to see, cause it's totally what you're meant to do. And I feel that every time I'm around you, I'm like, 
Mike's going to help me out today. I'm definitely going to stay in the cold plunge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like if he wasn't I there, I don't think I would do it. <laughs> We're getting a, a cold plunge for the host. And I'm like, how can I get Mike over here at least five times in the morning at 6 a.m.? I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, but there is such a coaching presence about you that you mm-hmm. just feel like so comfortable and safe to be around. And I can see how, you, especially kids, families, whatever it is you want to work with. Yeah. So cool. So when you were doing all this stuff, you were in like the corporate world before that, right? And when did you go completely on your own? How long ago was that? Yeah. So I was corporate America, started in telecom and went through all of it, all the way from like a wrap in a store, all the way through. Tell people what telecom is for all the people who have no idea what it is. (laughs) When cell phones first started, I was the guy that was was called telecom. I never even knew that. Yeah. Uh, that's what it was. Wow. Yeah. I like finished calls and decided I was going to, didn't have no idea what I was going to do. And uh, so I went to like a temp agency and they were like, show up here. And again, I got lucky. The guy that was the manager there um, was really nice and good. And I remember him like, being very motivational. So I kind of learned quickly. And then I used my own organizational skills, I guess. Now that I'm thinking back about it, I haven't thought of it a long time to kind of promote, my, to get promoted pretty quickly. So then I was like a manager and then had some crazy adventures along the way as anybody does mm-hmm. on their, their path in corporate America. But eventually in like 2017, I was um, on a strategy team for uh, like one aspect of the business and I loved it. Yeah. I was like, really was like my, it was just like coaching. It was like kind of like figuring out what, which way this would work best and then helping everybody understand it the same way you understood it so that it would work. And if someone didn't understand it the same way, it wouldn't work. So it's like you had to put all those things together. But that involved me flying around the country and meeting with all these people, which I definitely loved. And I wouldn't say I didn't, but it was still corporate America. It was still the, it's just the money thing. It's just the grind grinding thing. You just got to do it because that's what we do as people. Again, when COVID hit, like, my job was pretty much like, went from flying around the country to like just not existent, which was really nice. I mean, yeah. for me, for at least a couple months, I got the opportunity to really think about whatever it was I wanted to do. And that was obviously 2020. I kept thinking that I should just go this direction, but didn't, you know, for fear of all of the things that we're afraid of. And then in 2021, uh, I got a journal. Actually, I'll tell the story. I think it's pretty impactful. I wrote down, I swear to God, I'll show you the paper on January 1st, that one of my goals was to be done with corporate America by my 40th birthday, May 8th, 2000, uh, 2021, 2022. And T-Mobile presented me with the um, severance package on, it turned out to be Friday, May 7th. Stop it! I swear to God, I have it. I have it. Like, uh, it was Friday, May 7th. I was like, you can't go back now. Yeah. Like you can't go back now. Like the universe was like, here, here's you asked for it. You wrote it down. You wish for it. And you put your intention behind it. Like, here it is. And here you go. Here's a nice little start and good luck. And uh, mm-hmm. then the real challenge started. Like then uh, all of the using my own mindfulness for to understand and conquer that self doubt that we all have. Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna say conquer because uh, I'm gonna speak it into existence, right? But yeah. uh, you know overcome those challenges that we all have that are so prevalent in our own world, in our athletics, in our, you know, in our life. And that pushed me even deeper into mindfulness and deeper Mm -hmm. into the breath and deeper into the physiological response when I would get anxious and nervous and I would breathe as hard as I could just for a minute to see what would happen. And I realized, started to realize that it was not that I wanted it to happen, that it was physically happening. And that's when I really started to really just be more emboldened. And I know this is the path for me mm-hmm. to share this information with as many people as I can uh, from a physiological standpoint, and then learn as much as I can from every angle of it. Yeah. So, so amazing. It's quite the walkthrough. No, I love it. I love it. <laughs> into all this stuff. So it's like, you know, you're on this path and around like, 30-ish, right? You're like, okay, like I'm going to get more into like breathing. I want to be in shape. And then I think for a lot of us, like, and that could be kind of a gradual thing, right? It's like, oh, I'm spiritual, all this stuff. Like I'm breathing, going to yoga. I got this. I am good. Mm-hmm. Right? And um, I think pretty similar time frame, 2020, like a lot of us really just like opened up pretty fast. Mm-hmm. 
And I can relate to that as well. And in a learned hand too, of just like leaving corporate America, you have time. So you're out of the hamster wheel. You're out of the, you know, what we're told is important. And then you start to go into all your own shit. Like owning <laughs> your own business is going to bring up a lot of your shit. Yeah. And just having more time too. So it seems like the past few years, even doing like our yoga training and the breath work has skyrocketed your journey like so much farther than you thought it would have. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So tell us about some of your breath experiences then. Or like, how is it? impacted you or anything like that anything you want to share yeah, sure. or anything that's really like skyrocketed skyrocket your spirituality or where you're at mm-hmm. now it's helping for sure yeah. yeah once i learned about the breath i was like maybe because i'm fancying myself a smart person i was like i got that i know what to do like and i just practice at it and just keep practicing at it and it'll just keep getting better and i know that's true and it is but that experience that i had changing the breath and using it for a different purpose, opened my eyes to the fact that, that I really didn't know anything there was to know about. That. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I knew that at all. Um, and then basically that first round of holotropic breathing that we did in the yoga, it was so impactful for me. Be, and well, it was impactful for me because the story ends with me talking to my soul, yeah. <laughs> but it starts with, I didn't know what to expect. Mm-hmm. So I didn't, I couldn't convince myself that I made it happen because I didn't know what to make happen you guys didn't say anything you're just like all right we're gonna do breath work today go ahead lay down on your back and start breathing as hard as you can yeah. and, and, and true athlete, <laughs> you make it sound so casual it was. Right? It, i like mean a little pep talk was like just don't give up yeah yeah <laughs> you keep fighting through your shit. like let's go yeah <laughs> <laughs> specifically though when you said you said if i whenever i think about you know do i want to live and i remember the words a half-assed life I, and then or do i not want to do my breathing and i think do i really want to live a half-assed life i better do my breathing and that like was like from an athlete perspective and from my own personality i was like i will do this i'm gonna <laughs> yeah i'm not gonna say a word i'm just gonna be the best breather i don't even know how they'll know that i'm the best breather but I'm gonna be the best. <laughs> I'm gonna be the best. we do <laughs> i was like oh shit he's yeah. skyrocketing he's gonna go with it back he's like he was like giving you a thumbs up he's like Keep it up. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, now I realize you guys knew when I started hysterically crying. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> laughing hysterically. Yeah. I think I had to apologize at the end for laughing hysterically. Oh, too. it's a beautiful yeah. aspect. That's, That's a great to be, right? Yeah. So, like, be vulnerable to allow yourself just to go into it. It's so inspiring for other people mm-hmm. because, you know, you think people are so all talk with breathing, right? It's like just really intense trauma release breathing. You're mm-hmm. breathing in and out of the mouth for an hour or more yeah yeah can send you to these places where a lot of people go back and you know it's their path and lauren and i or even myself sometimes it's like okay let's just put them ready for at the time but Mm -hmm. you and your experience of breathing for so long and being into it you just went right in yeah yeah and it is honestly that athlete perspective that you're like i'm gonna fucking do this let's go it's that like rip band-aid why half-ass it absolutely good it was like i would show up i know for the yoga in the morning I can do this. I'm going to go through the whole class and just really like stay connected to the physical aspect of it. Cause I knew we would work on a lot of mental stuff in the afternoon. Yeah. And then when we started with the breath, I was like, all right, I'm going to do this just as hard. Yeah. And now I find myself saying that when I'm coaching the breath, even not, not even the whole topic breath, but just trying to get people to understand the breath. I'll say things like, we just finished stretching. We just finished working the body. You got to do this just as hard. It's just as much intention. Mm-hmm. And that, and that was definitely from this understanding of what happens when you really stay with it and really work mm-hmm. at it. Mm-hmm. But that one really helped me know that there's more. <laughs> <laughs> there just is in there and your breath or spent differently, right? The way your body is physically taking in and letting go of air affects your brain in such a way that you can find it. Mm-hmm. And there's no other way to find it. You can't take a pill or I guess you could, you know, do hallucinogenics and you can find it that way, maybe, but not the way that, for me personally, not the way you can find it. If you just allow your breath to just be what guides you for as long, however long it takes, and then you won't have to have anybody tell you whether it worked or not. It's amazing. I feel that. So how taking this realizations and like the breath and the importance of it, how can this apply or do you see it applying for your athletes or the physio- 
psychological responses for them and they're like even the mental capabilities it has to change honestly the game it changes the game so the, the people that i've been training and i'm lucky enough to train I, one gentleman i'll use an example he told himself that he was going to get in shape after he retired he was lucky enough to retire i think he's like 54 amazing job by him and i remember meeting with him for kind of the first time when we knew each other before but actually from an athletic standpoint and just working out in the parking lot in like you know 20 minutes was kind of our max right and it was because he just couldn't breathe he just couldn't do it he didn't have the understanding or the the capacity and hadn't worked at it in so long so we started with the breath and like he'll tell me to this day that was the changer for him that was what without that he wouldn't be where he is now and he is someone who runs 5ks consistently i never did before like just i mean at like an eight and a half nine minute mile amazing the dude is like amazing amazing. he's kicking ass and he's he's just amazing right and every time we spent a lot of time together we spent a lot of time lifting and and doing certain things i don't run so i can't claim any credit for the running (laughs) (laughs) but he'll still say that the whole thing is the breath the whole thing was that you taught me that once i learned how to breathe i could work out longer could work out harder, could work out, I could run, I could do things that were hard. And that is what changed the whole game Mm -hmm. for him. And I like, same thing. I have like examples of that up and down the spectrum of age of athlete. It's so universal, but as trainers, as coaches, as, you know, people that have an an agenda and I'm not using that word negatively, but like they want to like, work on this aspect of something or work on this aspect of something. It's like, once you start with the breath, then you can get past it. Then you can work on aspects of athleticism, balance, strength, game, sport theory, whatever you want, but you got to get to a t- to a spot where you get that first. And for me, that's just been, it's been working with the people that I've been lucky enough to spend time with. I mean, whether, whatever their, their reason for, for starting with me is they all say the same thing. It's, you taught me the breath and now I can do it. Now I can do all the hard things. I can, one woman came up to me recently, I know I'm tangenting, but I, I just did me my whole week. She said, I hadn't seen you in, in a month or so. And uh, I was like, okay. And I remember and she's like, I had a small surgery and you are breath where what you explained to me about the breath, about how it always stays with you, helped me get through it. Mm-hmm. And like, I think I responded with, the exact words were like, I don't know how to respond to that, <laughs> but I'm super grateful. And I can and so thankful you told me, but that's it. That's, that's why it's, I'm so passionate about it. That's yeah. I just see it work over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I mean, find that as well. When we do breath works, workshops and all of those things. It's just so simple. So you feel like it's, yeah. oh, and it's usually the most truest things in life are the simplest, right? And it's, everything's so simple, but we love to complicate everything and be like, no, we got to do these box jumps over there and these crazy workouts over here and eat like the most strict thing in, in the world. But it's like really comes down to like, no, nah, how are you breathing? Yeah. Like, are you holding your breath? Are you in like a heavy lift or do it in an intense situation? Even when, cause I remember when I used to even like run and stuff like that, at times I'd hold my breath in and not even knowing it. Like I'm really trying to go for something hard in a sprint or even thing like that. And I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? And if you just open it up, so much more energy would come through. Absolutely. I think too, like what gets me is how funny when you start talking about mindfulness to people that don't meditate or whatever, Mm -hmm. they all say the same thing and they all expect that they're saying something that you've never heard before. Or they're like, nope, can't meditate. My brain is too... X, right? <laughs> my brain is too fluttery. My brain is too this. I'm I too, too smart. I got too much going on. My, uh, they all say it like it's like they're like a unique perspective. Right? And it's like, <laughs> I wish I could record the last 30 people I had this conversation with because they all said the same thing you just said. Yeah. And, and so did I. And I bet so did you guys. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like not okay. enough time. But yeah. All yeah, those things are true. I don't know how. Not enough time. Yeah. It's probably like the top same with thing. yoga. Like, can't touch my toes. Like not flexible. not flexible. It's like I love it when people say specifically, "My brain is too all over the place." Yeah. It's like, <laughs> I'm like, so dirty, I can't shower. You know, what I mean? like, <laughs> I'm so dirty. <laughs> you know, it's like just 
just do, sick. just try, you know? Just try. Yeah, I love mm-hmm. that. Just try. Um, and it sounds like with your coaching practice, like it's you take a different perspective, right? It's like, you know, a lot of people start with going into the physical or here's the diet you got to follow, here's your exercise, and you're like, let's start with your breath, right? Which mm-hmm. I like that it's, it's different. What's your coaching practice like now? What's it called? What's your deal with that? Um, so Corey and I, we decided when what we were going to start our company was going to be Simple Healthy Life. And it came super easy for us. We were sitting there trying to figure out what we're going to call it. And we're like, let's just do the things that we love. And so Simple Healthy Life. Thank God for her uh, through this process because she was the driver in, in nutrition for sure, which I'm super grateful for. Um, and I was the driver in the athletic breathwork area. Uh, we needed, we, we make an amazing team. So I couldn't be happier about that. That's what was born simple, healthy life. So we haven't done any marketing, uh, really. And we're just kind of letting whoever comes our way, come our way. And it's been amazing. It's like the diff, all different kind of ages and walks of life. And every people that have come our way have all been amazing. And right now it's just been a ton of fun. You know, all that concern about, am I moving fast enough or gaining enough clients or is this a sustainable model? Because, you know, we're we're trying to help so many people and we only have so much time. That's all in there. But the the day-to-day, spending the time and and seeing the people grow has been just incredible. So that has been and is, continues to be Mm -hmm. kind of the the crux of the business. We're excited to now be able to share cold tub and stuff with people yeah. because it's, it's, um, it pushes the agenda of helping them understand physically what happens with their breath mm-hmm. and then mentally what ha- the benefits are. And we've been playing with this concept of the mindful athlete mm-hmm. um, because of my love of athletics, like really trying to gear it towards younger, like middle, middle school, high school athletes um, in college teams, specifically, mm-hmm. if we can, to just help them understand what it looks like to use this power that they can gain as an advantage. And especially from a team perspective, we can start to teach these coaches and teach these groups that, collectively that just a little bit, just even 10 minutes a week during their practice time can benefit them late in games when things get tough. And once people start to see that, I don't, you know, there's no limit to the people that will want to learn about it. And that's what I want to share. So. Exactly. And it's such a, a missing piece. And like, it's, I know across the board, like athletics, high schools, all that, they don't see the value in it. And they really should, because it's like, it's a game changer. And you see Tom Brady and no one ever talks about what he does. This is the shit he was doing. You know? yeah. <laughs> like his person was yeah. helping with this stuff. It's all the meditation. It's all the breath work. It's all the mindfulness aspects. And it's just hugely important. It's not across the board, right? Athletes, it would change performance across the board, change across the game. The and then it, for everyone across, like all high school kids who are anxious and tired and stressed Absolutely. out and like need to just feel better in their bodies. Breath can just do that in minutes. And if we can just touch like one or two kids that don't yeah. say, mom, I, I need to go to the doctor because mm-hmm. of my brain, I'm nervous. Or I, I knew, I knew people that were like, couldn't go to games. They would get so nervous mm-hmm. and they're just like, and they're like, something's wrong with me. I can't do it. And it's like, back then, of course, I was like, yes, you're weird. Go away. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know. But now I'm like, wow, that's, if we could just touch those kids a little bit to say, this is a path that you can ultimately not just use for your, like you said, not just your athletic performance, which will become better for your whole world, your whole life, your whole life, the perspective on school and life in general. (laughs) So that's um, not as concise as I probably would have liked that answer to be, but that's what we're, we're working at now. That sounds an amazing answer. Yeah. All ages, right? It's not like you want to try to just work with like, it's one type of person. It's like breath and health and feeling better for everybody. Yeah. But Everyone the athletics it. too seems like a big part of it. Um, that's just so fun, right? Yeah. It's like I'm, just, I'm so when I'm whenever I'm in an athletic environment, even if I'm making my own in yoga, doing my own thing, pretending I'm in a team environment or whatever, <laughs> you know, I'm happy. You know, especially coaching. 
in just helping and seeing people are being able to communicate effectively to actually see the change in something is just that's it's what I want to do. Yeah. Yeah. What I want to keep doing. I have to say, like, just Laura and I grew up on the same soccer team our whole life. And I used to just see the positive. Like, sports can be super stressful for kids when it's like this is what you have to do right our whole life is on it. But being a part of the team is one of the biggest impacts ever, like, whether you are good or you're not. And that, and the coaches you have, the teammates, like, everlasting friendship. So it's really cool to just see how. I still talk to some of my coaches. Yeah. It's like yeah. wild, you know, like 20 years later, 12, 30, like it's crazy. It impact your life so much. Mm-hmm. So I think um, you're definitely in a needed area. Thanks. Yeah. My wrestling, my high school wrestling coach was an amazing human. And uh, I still talk to him all the time. And I would say like wrestling is such a tough sport and there's such a grind and you got to work so hard and practice and all this stuff. And he made it so fun just by being humorous and calling a spade a spade. If you were doing something stupid, he would just mm-hmm. say, that's dumb, you know? <laughs> and, I, and I took so much away from that. And so now knowing that I can like share that with other people and, and just help them is amazing. Yeah. And it's where the whole world is going to. Mm-hmm. Just the whole mindfulness aspects of everything. Any way you can help and bring it in is so important, especially with kids and athletes. Athleticism the kids, yeah. like a huge relatable area to do it in. Yeah. Right. So it's like, oh, it's gonna help me be better at sports. Like, yeah, I'm gonna try it. Yeah. Versus like going into like gym class and being like, all right, we're gonna breathe today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. I hate gym, but okay. like <laughs> gonna sit down. Okay, everybody sit down. Yeah. Don't think. Like what? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. It's just bullshit. There's so many good assets and all these things I wish I had known so much younger, but I always say it's always perfect timing, right? You become aware when you are supposed to be aware. Mm-hmm. And every time I work with younger, I coaching and doing um, healing and nutrition with high school, college students, I'm always so pumped. And I'm like, yeah. this is so amazing. Like, we're going to go right in there. That limiting belief is going to be healthy. <laughs> yeah. like, so valuable. Like, you don't need to deal with this. And I'm like, I'm just learning in my 30s. You know? right. so, but it's all perfect. The other day, I was like, <laughs> I was being grumpy about adults in general, including <laughs> myself. We both are being grumpy because sometimes adults, that they have their hardwired beliefs and mm-hmm. they're just like, nope, this is what it is. Life sucks. Da, 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 da. I'm like, <laughs> I was like, fuck the adults. Sit, but now I'm like, oh, we're gonna work with kids. Absolutely, <laughs> I could not agree more. I love it because kids, you can just you can just tell them what's up, and they'll tell you back. Exactly. And you're like, okay, awesome. Right. At it. Good. We both understand each other. You, yeah. know? Like, you don't have to worry about any of that other nonsense. No, no. I've been noticing a lot lately in my own kind of path, a lot of like traits that kids have. And I've been seeing it in adults. So like, mm-hmm. I mean, I've been using T-ball as an example, but like, you know, that kid that's like, I don't know anything about T-ball, but my parents are making me play T-ball. And so T-ball stupid, right? Yeah. I don't care, right? I'm not going to, I'm not even going to care. Well, I see that. And sometimes <laughs> in adults, when they're doing something new and they have that, like, they instantly go into this, like, nope, I'm not going to care. Like, you can almost like see it. And it's like, mm-hmm. wow, you're like the same eight-year-old that I just talked to the other day like <laughs> but we all do that in some way right or like i know for me i, I can tell you <laughs> what i'm what i'm very much guilty of like i get into this younger version of me where i'm nervous or in an uncomfortable spot i want to make sure that there's someone else there that also knows that this is stupid and i <laughs> so now we can get like a team against the whatever is going on <laughs> so i like i'm i'm working on it mo- very mindfully but i, I notice when i'll be like no this is no, don't you think this is stupid? This is how you think, right? <laughs> and then I'll be like, all right, I have a buddy, two people stupid. And like, yeah, validation. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I, do, I do it. That's my like younger thing. That, and, you know, I've got to get on it, I guess, to work at it. And then it's the, like 95% of the decisions and actions we have right now are from the zero to seven. Yeah. <laughs> like anything that we're triggered by, and we talk about this all the time, and sports is such a good, relatable example. It's, like, mm-hmm. it's just our younger selves. Right, mm-hmm. and like what version of you is still holding on? Is still angry? Is still sad? Is still feeling these emotions? And 
any adult that's triggered is their younger version being like, okay, like, and most people aren't aware of it. No, I'm just starting just to like, see it now. You said yeah. you said it so well. I'm only just starting to notice it now. I notice it in everything. Yeah. It's all I see. It's all it's all the inner child, and that's why the shadow work is so important. But it's just like the reflection, and it's across the board. If they ask, like if you in a sport, it's going to be that same trait in every other aspect of their life. It's just going to keep showing up in different areas. Just mm-hmm. it's all, yeah, and. Yeah, it's why you always need to know the full story. And I'm like, tell me when you were born. Tell me all the things. How this is reflecting. It's like, like analyzing. I'm just right. yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, sure. like, all right, Mike, tell me about yourself. I know. It's me and Lauren have these conversations like all the time. Yeah. Like, so, what do you think about this? <laughs> you can go down the rabbit hole. I could. I could. <laughs> so many things you just said. That's for nothing. Yeah. That's <laughs> why so I stopped myself because I'm like, okay, this is a whole other episode. <laughs> right? So, yeah, is there anything else you would like to share or want us to know about the breath, the mind, athleticism, coaching, or any like pieces of advice you would give to people mm-hmm. that are looking to, nice. you know, implement more? Whether it's for, yeah, what would be your best piece of advice you would give to somebody looking to connect more with their breath or their body or feel better? Okay, great question. It's a hard question. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it can be like a couple things. You know, yeah. It's best, right? It's like <laughs> best. All right. Number one thing you can do, no matter what, Mike James, I would say seek out and try a few times someone to coach you through a breath work slash mindfulness mm. practice. It doesn't not, not the crazy stuff that we talked about, not holotropic. I wouldn't start there by any stretch. Although you could in fact be interesting to see what happened. But just seek out and try maybe five or six times in a short period of time, you know, over the course of a week or two weeks or something, just to make sure there's a difference. Make sure mm-hmm. you make sure it, something happen and i would even say make sure you have someone to coach you find someone to connect with i suppose would be would be the person would be the most beneficial but don't be afraid to try the cold with it because yeah. it proves it right you you'll do a mindfulness meditation or you'll do some some breath work where you physically can't help but notice the change mm-hmm. and don't just put on youtube for five minutes and you know, space out or whatever, really seek out and try and, and give it five total hours of your life. And I think that if you really give it like five total hours with actual effort that you would put into learning something else, by then you'll know at least that there is something. You'll know deep down in your own being that something's happening in my body when I do this. And then you can choose to use it any way you want. You either choose to continue on or, you know, put it away for a while or maybe come back to it. Or maybe even you do that and that pattern happens. And then a couple of years from now, you stumble into a YouTube video and something clicks differently. And then, you, then you're off and running again, right? I don't know what that path will be for you or for, for anybody, but give it that five hours of real intentional effort. Even if it has to be broken over 20 sessions or whatever the case is. And I, I think that would be the way that I would say to go to go log starting. I love that. Mm-hmm. That's always what we say for yoga too. Yes. Yeah. Anything you have to more than one shot. Yeah. Well it is. It's like honestly, like you said, anything because we all hold those that change is hard. So you do something like ah not for me. Yeah. It's like anything across the board, you gotta give it a shot. And you gotta give it an honest effort. Exactly. Really it'd be like when your brain thinks about pizza and you're like, um they just went there and thought about pizza for the whole time. This is stupid, right? Like yeah. That's what happens. That's what happens. Right? Okay, well, I'm going to try not to do it next time. So then you got to go back. And you just got to give it your best. And once you do, the body is physiologically conditioned to respond in a certain way. It's not you. It's not your, your brain or how weird or normal you are or aren't. And it's not how in shape or out of shape you are or aren't. It's physically just putting in that effort and the body will respond. Mm-hmm. Same way it responds if there was a tiger behind you. It's going to happen. You're not going to, nothing else is, not, it's going to happen. You're going to see the tiger and you're going to run. There's you're not, no thought. 
Same thing with this. You're going to understand when this happens, then this happens. And you start to find that little space between this like thought and the reaction to the thought or the reaction versus response. And that starts to widen and you, you start to use it when people cut you off. Mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> or in the big, or in a big moment when you got to make a free throw, you know, or, or all of it, or when you're talking to your spouse and they're, and you're having a tough conversation that you didn't expect, you just came home from work and then boom, someone hits you with some information that you didn't want. And what do you do that? Right. Mm-hmm. No, one's perfect, but sometimes you can officially use the same physiological response that you cultivated through practice to say, I'm going to at least respond and not react. So good. Yes. I think that part for me, it becomes like almost about personal freedom. And so when you're in a tough spot and you are able to respond and not react, when it's over, you don't have to beat yourself up about it. You can be like, no, I chose, <laughs> maybe I came up with the wrong answer, but I chose that answer. Yeah. Like I fucking thought about it for a second. And I was like, I said, whatever I said, Yeah. you don't beat yourself up about those ones. You beat yourself up about when you had this really long, difficult, challenging conversation. You would just respond, 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 or react, 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 react. Then you go back. And, and what do you do when you go back? You go back and you go, I could have responded differently here. I could have. I could have responded differently here. Yeah, I should have said this. It's more visceral. Yeah, it's like no. You know what? That's all lessons. All lessons you need to learn. But yeah, I love that. Beautiful. And we always end. Too. This is another tough question for you, but we end with asking: How are you making your way in the ocean? Like, what what lights you up? What's what are you most passionate about easy one finally an easy one yay (laughs) this sharing this with more people and Mm -hmm. make and helping people understand that the breath is not anything other than the way your body takes in and lets go of air Mm -hmm. and when you physically decide you want to change that you can and the benefits for doing that are your entire life will improve your personal freedom your athleticism your relationships everything this is where i get crazy right i'm like selling it but then it's like i'm like but everybody will use it and it'll the best thing ever no matter what yeah. and people are like hmm, maybe maybe <laughs> no i'm with but you it really like, will. It's like, it like will. Yes, just it go, will. Go. just figure <laughs> out how to find sense. someone to help you with it and then once you get it a little bit just don't stop doing it a hundred percent. It will change your life. I completely agree with that. It will transform every aspect of your life. Absolutely. Hands down. Love it. Believe and so it shall be. Yes. So it shall be. <laughs> Amazing. Wow. Awesome stuff. Thank you so much for being here, Mike. This Mike. Was so much fun. Thank you. We could chit chat with you all day, which we normally will probably continue to do right now. <laughs> But yes, if anyone has questions on any of this, the breath, athleticism, mindfulness, questions from Mike at all, we'll drop his info in the show notes. So feel yeah. free to reach out. And as always, we'll put our info in there too. Yeah. And we'll be doing some collaborations this summer. Yeah. Yes. A cold plunge, extraordinaire, breath, all the things <laughs> we're going to do together. Nice summer festival with it. And we'll be doing breath work every month as usual. Yes. So. Yes. Well, thanks for joining, guys, and we'll see you next time. Bye bye. Bye. Much love. Much love. <laughs> Thank you for listening. For more information on our classes, events, and retreats, check out our website at yogilarns.com linked in the show notes. We love to hear how you are making your own unique wave in the ocean. Connect with us on Instagram at yogilarns. See you next time.